Hello everyone, this is Fletch from Twilight Render. You can get this file from the link down in the description. Today we're going to talk about PBR materials, physically based rendering materials. Typically these days you can download some pretty high quality materials from various websites, and this is how you can use them with Twilight Render. We are going to download from Polygon the Bricks Flemish Red 001. This is a free material that they have that's a good example. All you have to do is uh, create your own login for that website, and then you can go and find it in the Bricks and download it for yourself. After saving it to your hard drive, unzip the file in your operating system to reveal the various maps, and here they are. When working with Twilight Render, you can use any of these maps, but I suggest using the JPEGs as opposed to the TIFFs. So I'm going to, for my convenience, I'm going to put these into a main folder and not have it uh, so many folders deep. And then I'm going to delete the TIFF files because I, I won't use them. You're free to use them. Um, be sure that you have a lot of RAM on your computer if you plan on using the TIFF files. Also, um, there's a thread on our forum about using high resolution textures. So here we're going to sample the brick that was in the scene already, and we're going to open up the new brick texture that we just downloaded. You can choose either one of these two diffuse textures that they have. Now we're going to look at the aspect ratio of this texture when imported into SketchUp is going to try to match the aspect ratio of the texture that was already applied. So we're going to go to Photoshop and we're going to open up this texture and see the actual aspect ratio. Here it is. Let's open these up and take a look at them. Here we can see that they are perfect squares. And just to verify, we're going to go to image size. Okay, so you go to image, image size. And here we can see that it's a perfect square. So whatever size for this texture we choose in SketchUp, we need to make sure that it's the same width as it is the height. So here we're going to set the width and the height to be the same by breaking that chain. And then we can relink that chain. And now when we change the width, it'll change the height. So now I can set it. I'm just going to start out with eight foot by eight foot just to check and see what size it is. We know that three bricks stacked up is eight inches and a typical brick is about eight inches long. So I'm going to make a little square here on the wall, eight inches by eight inches to verify the size of the texture itself. We can see that it's a little bit too small. So I'm going to expand this to 9 feet to see if it now fits. I'm going to move the square around to see how it looks on the wall. That's pretty close, but if we want to be exact, um, I should eliminate a little bit more of the height. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Let's try, uh, this is supposed to be 9 foot, let's try 9 foot 8 inches. That's very close. Let's try nine foot six. And there we go, that looks just right. So the height here is eight inches. And I like that. It's very important that you have the correct scale for your materials. All texture mapping is done within SketchUp's normal tools, but now we can go to the Twilight Materials tool. We'll select that brick, choose Advanced Reflection, and choose Concrete Map. Concrete, tile, and wood mapped are your uh, three main choices for mapped specular maps. I'm choosing concrete mapped because concrete is the closest thing that I have to brick. So starting there. And here we have a displacement map, we have an AO map, and we have a bump map. You can use inside the bump, you could use the bump map or the displacement map. So we can go to bump and choose texture. Here in the reflection map, we want to choose one of the reflection type of maps. So they have a gloss, which looks very good. But in addition to that, they also have a reflection map. So let's choose the reflection map. It says REFL or gloss in the name so you can recognize which one's which. We'll choose the reflection map first. We want to try and test things out and see how they look. And then for the bump, we'll choose the bump map. And let's hit render and see how this is looking. If you choose fit to view proportions, 
anything that you've drawn in a size here, any size that you choose will uh, match the SketchUp view. I'm going to choose medium render setting and hit play. And we will fast forward through this so to speed up this video. And we'll just let you take a look at the final result here. So here we are, and we can see that um, you can see the specular reflections here on the left. But when we're looking straight on at a wall, it's hard to tell um, exactly how that bump and everything is working. So we need to choose a different view. It's very important when you are testing materials to use a lighting setup and a scene that is reflective of how the material will actually be used. Because the lighting and the viewing angle can really affect greatly how your materials will appear in the scene. Here I'm going to go through real quickly and check the rest of the scene here. I'm going to apply the polished concrete floor template to the floor. And I'm going to set the bump to be 0.2 strength. I don't want it to be very bumpy. It should be a polished concrete. Here we got the paint the template applied to the paint and so on and so forth. Now we're looking at the brick wall again. And let's render this again from this angle. And this time I'm going to choose a little bit smaller view so that we can get quicker previews. And I'm going to uncheck fit to view proportions because I'm not trying to match the view of SketchUp. I'm trying to get a good view of this brick wall from this angle with this lighting. And I have a pretty quick laptop here, 12 threads, so I'm going to choose unbiased render setting. It gives a very fast preview. And we do have the denoise uh, rendering plugin applied here, but um, I've not turned it on. And here already we can see the gloss on the brick material is already reflecting the light, and we can see the bump effect within the first few seconds of rendering. I'm going to fast forward through this, even though I only let it run for a minute, and show you the uh, end results of this quick test. Here it is after a minute, and with the denoise applied, we can see that the specular reflections are really strong, and maybe the whole wall looks like it's been glazed like a donut, so it's probably not the effect we're going for, so we're going to have to try and tone that down a little bit. You can see that after only a minute, we have a beautiful preview of this material. So let's go and tone down these bumps and these specular reflections. Going back into the material template, we can change the minimum shininess to be much lower. I would typically keep it between 7 and 10, something above 5. You can leave the shine range at 200. And then the IOR, the index of refraction, can be toned down. So 1.0 being air, 1.1 uh, being um, a low index of refraction, 1.33 being that of water, 1.52 being that of glass. So somewhere between 1.5 and 1 will be typical for most of your index of refractions that you want. You can look up the index of refraction that you need for your materials online. And let's fast forward. And here we are after just a few seconds of rendering. You can see a great difference with the different IOR and the minimum shininess changed. And let's see what can change and show the difference. So this is a bump of one, a bump size of one or bump strength, however you want to refer to it. In the Twilight Render dialog for the template materials, it says size. And that's really kind of the apparent depth of that bump. Here, well, let's tweak the IOR a little bit because it seems like we've lost some of the reflection. If we were to choose 1.4, you can see it update immediately in the material preview. And let's hit render again and just remind you what 1.4 might look like. And here, just after 20 seconds or so, you can already see um, how that specular reflection is working in this IOR of 1.4, how everything looks a little glazed. 
So we're going to reduce that, but we did want to bring a little bit of it back. So we're going to try 1.2 instead of 1.4. And remember, we're using the reflection map. We could try the gloss map here and see how that looks. If we try that and we've got an IOR of 1.2, let's stop this rendering and we'll try again. Again, we'll fast forward ahead to show you the results of this. Here it is after just 30 seconds or so. We can see that the bump is looking uh, very nice and the reflections are looking also quite nice. I'm pretty pleased with how this is turning out. But we can take a look at this uh, size of the bump. Here we can see we're using bump size 1. If I use denoise, you can see uh, how the image would look without any noise. But you can see that in the dark areas it gets a little blurry. So we'll let it cook just a little longer. It's only been rendering about a minute. Here it is at two and a half minutes. We're going to stop the rendering. And we'll quickly enable denoise just to see how it's looking. And there we go. Even the shadows are looking better now. So you can get quite a nice rendering quite quickly with denoise rendering. And here let's try a bump size of five just to overemphasize the bump. I typically do not recommend going over a bump size of two. And with PBR materials or downloaded professionally built materials, always keep the bump size at one at first because they are built to be the correct size right away. So you shouldn't need to adjust the bump depth. If you do adjust the bump depth, typically it might be to adjust it downwards. So you might do 0.5 or 0.2 or even 0.1. But you can see here immediately that if you use a bump size that's too strong, it looks very fake and uh, just looks very strange to the eye. Uh, looks like um, an old video game, perhaps. So let's set it back to one. And here you can see we're using the bump texture, but you might try looking at using this displace texture, DISP. And let's try and render with displace texture. In some cases, the displace texture might be what you're going for. Um, the bump texture, of course, is going to have the small details um, here on the face of the brick. Uh, while the displace texture will be pretty much focused on bumping the entire brick out and the um, mortar between the bricks bumping that back. So on a bump map, of course, anything that's black will be bumped downwards and anything that's white will be bumped upwards. Anything that's 50% gray will not be bumped at all. So if you want to build your own bump map or adjust the bump map in Photoshop, that's how you do it. You can... Uh, strengthen the blacks or the whites as you need. So here we can see that the bricks are now represented as very smooth, but yet you still get the bumpy effect of the bricks popping out. So we're going to stop the render here, and we're going to choose the bump map again because I liked the effect of the actual bricks themselves getting a bump. But let's also um, not forget that there's the normal map, and the normal map is another way of representing bump maps. The different colors in the normal map are used by the engine to specify the bounce of light off of a surface. We will show you how to use the normal map when we open the deep editor. But here you can see again, just to remind you that with the proper bump map, uh, you get a nice effect on the bricks themselves. And the size is 1. You could change the shininess range. Here we have it set to 50, which has reduced the shine a little bit in these areas, in these dark areas. So we will we'll stop that rendering. And now we will look it into the deep editor. So convert to deep and choose yes when you want to convert the template. So it's going to take this material that you've built already with all your settings and tweaks. It's going to bring into the deep material editor. This is for pro users only. In order to use the normal map in the deep editor, you choose the bump heading, the main heading, and you choose normal map. 
Do you want to replace the existing channel data? Yes. Right click on texture, choose basic image. And then when the image is selected, you can choose your normal map. There you go. And here you can see that the bump map is not able to be adjusted as far as the strength or size goes when you're using the normal map. Here's what it looks like. This material is built with layers. There's a color layer and there's a reflection layer. And these layers are driven by weights. There's the weight for one and weight for the second layer. Each of these weights um, determines what you'll see. So the weight of the first layer is just going to be the color, which is your diffuse map. And the weight for the reflection layer is all of these different ways that reflections can be controlled. Here, the specular reflection is driven by a solid color. It's driven by white, but if you want to tone down the specular reflections, you come in here and you set it to mid-gray. And that you could also use an image to drive this specular texture. So we're going to replace the specular with an image texture, and we're going to go find the image and choose one of the specular textures from the PBR material. but we're going to choose the reflection texture and place it as the specular reflections. And that will tone down these bright areas that are in the shadows. And then under shininess map, we can see that the reflection is also drawn, driven by an image. And that is driven by that gloss texture image. And you can see that already that that changes how the reflections work in the dark areas. It's easiest to see. Remember, we're driving a bump with a normal map right now, but we can, or we can even use a procedural to drive the bump maps. We can add layers onto the uh, bump maps and so on and so forth. So we can get very deep in the deep material editor. But for now, we're going to just leave it run by the normal map. We're going to start a new rendering. And I will fast forward to show you the results of using the new specular. Keep your eye on the light areas in the shadow. While that's rendering, let's talk about weights. This weight is driven by a Fresnel, and this is where you change your index of refraction for that material. That's for the gloss. Don't forget you have different preview scenes, and you can change the size of these preview scenes just by changing the size of your dialog box. So let's make it a more of a square and get a larger preview. Whenever you click on one of these titles, the preview will be given for that title. Click on the word material and it gives you the whole material preview. Let's try and render again, but this time using the bump texture image. And I think this is a uh, pretty nice brick. Here again, we're looking when we're using the reflection map, we're using that one called gloss from the PBR. And again, the specular image, we're using the reflection image from the PBR material. And as we can see, is this texture looks really nice on that wall. And you should be pretty pleased by that. But again, um, you will have to tweak it for your image that you're rendering. You will want to tweak the shininess and things according to your image that you need for your artistic vision. You can choose to change the shininess right here if you need to change the reflective shininess. You can even go down to 7 to get a really low, kind of a flat look. Here if you need to change the bump strength, you can change it right here. So choose the main bump heading and change the strength to 2. Here I can show you really quick what that might look like. We'll fast forward real quick. My taste, I prefer the strength to remain at one. I'm going to set it to one and I will re-render again and we will look at the final image.
In addition to this website here, there are other websites for these textures. Simply search with your favorite engine for PBR material textures. And here there's a website, for instance, freepbr.com. This also has material textures you can download for free. You can also buy. I highly suggest you just pay the five bucks and download all their textures. But there are lots more on the web, so feel free to search around and find your own textures. High quality textures will give you high quality renderings, but the higher resolution the texture, keep in mind it will slow down the rendering. So I usually try to optimize my texture sizes to be whatever is needed for that image. Typically these high resolution textures are for very close viewing and in most architectural scenes you're not going to be up close to any material. So it totally depends on the image, but for the most part you can cut the images in half or even a quarter when they're 3K images and they will still look great in your rendering. Here is the image after seven minutes rendering. You can see that it's quite cleared up and looks really good. The denoiser should clear up any of these little speckles left. So here it is with the denoise and you see it looks quite lovely. Let's turn it off. Turn it back on. Thank you for watching. I hope this has cleared up how PBR materials work and I wish you happy rendering. Until next time, I'll see you on the forums.